But something that I think is really interesting about it is that this is actually a co-op game, whereas the original was just a solo experience. And the way that this game works is that you're going to be going through multiple acts, climbing up the spire, and then going up against a final boss. And as you're climbing up the spire, there's going to be multiple different paths that you can choose from. Some might give you some random event, while others might give you an opportunity to heal and level up your cards, while others might be different monsters that you can fight. And fighting monsters does come with its risk that you can take damage because you don't heal after a battle but the nice thing about fighting monsters is that it does give you access to free cards that you can add to your hand at the end of the battle and you can also gain coins that you can spend at the shop if you visit it and visiting the shop is just really nice because of the amount of options it gives you and even if you're playing this game with the exact same character you're gonna be building your deck differently every single time and there might be a different strategy that you're going from one game to the other and having all those extra options will really allow you to find the items or relics or other cards that pair really well with the deck that you're building Building. but also the shop is one of the places you can go to actually remove cards from your deck which is super helpful because if you have some really amazing cards either you upgraded them or they just pair really well together you can remove some of your lower level cards or some of your starter cards that are clogging up your deck and if you're familiar with the video game you're probably seeing a lot of similarities here which makes sense but the main difference between the video game and this board game is that in the video game you have a larger subset of cards out on display that you can just go ahead and choose from but in the board game you have have a smaller subset of cards that's just limited to the relics and the items and if you want to buy combat cards then you will be drawing three from the combat card deck and then you can pay their associated cost if you want to add them to your hand. And you'll also gain relics for free anytime that you visit these treasure chests but my favorite tile of them all is these bigger more scarier monster tiles and the reason i like these is because these are kind of like mini bosses that are a lot stronger than the regular monsters and there is a bigger risk of going up against them but anytime that you do defeat them you are guaranteed a relic in addition to additional cards and coins that you'll gain from them and if you don't die before you get there, you'll make your way to the final boss. And the reason that these are cards is because you can actually have different bosses for each of the acts. And when you get to this point in the game, you're going to be flipping that card to reveal which final boss you're going up against. And of course, players will each have their own player boards to keep track of their coins, items, and decks. And of course, you're going to be using those cards mostly in your battles. And in a battle, you can go up against multiple monsters at once. And each of the monsters do have their own health trackers and individual abilities and attacks. And they can behave a little bit differently, with some of the monsters' attacks being determined by a dice roll, and others just going in sequential order, which can lead to some sort of effect if you're not able to defeat them before they get to their final action. And of course, most of your cards will deal a varying amount of damage, but they can also have all sorts of other effects, like allowing you to draw more cards into your hand, giving you more action points to spend on your turn, doubling the damage of other cards, or even powering up your character or harming your opponents. And that can be done by gaining armor or strength, or causing your opponents to become fragile, which makes them easier to deal damage to, or weakened, which makes their attacks do a lot less damage. And combat works exactly the same for the final bosses, but of course they're going to be a lot stronger and have all sorts of varying effects and special abilities that are unique to them. And I did already mention that this was our Discord pick of the week, but this is also a game that I'm super excited about. I really did like the video game. I think it was worth every penny, and I do recommend downloading it and trying it out for yourself. Not only is it a fun game, but it'll let you know if you want to make that bigger investment into this board game, since there will be a lot of similarities between them. And I think if you like the video game, you'll probably like this board game. And also the constant delays that this game went through is encouraging to me. I do think that's a good sign because they're spending the extra time to get the game right rather than just rushing it out while they're still finding some issues and things that they could tweak. And I do think there's a lot of care that's going into this game just from reading some of the posts from the creators out on the BGG forums. I really like the things that they have to say and I'm just consistently finding indicators of good design where they're trying to make the game as fun as possible and strip away a lot of the fiddliness. And if you want to know more, they do have a post of seven random differences from the video game, and these are not comprehensive. There's going to be a lot more differences than what they mentioned here. I've already mentioned a few of them, and there'll be a lot more to discover. And if you think this one looks interesting, you can find links to the campaign in the description below, and you can go ahead and click that notify me button, which I have already clicked, along with nearly 20,000 other people, which is just incredible.